Hello and welcome to today's lecture on the port, uh, calculation of expected risk and return on the portfolio. Now uh, before explaining how to actually calculate the risk and return on the portfolio, let me first explain what the portfolio means. Consider uh, Mr. X who has saved uh, $1000 and wants to invest it uh, somewhere. Say for example if Mr. X chooses to invest it in uh, one stock, say for example he chooses it to invest in Infosys. Now in this case if Mr. X chooses to invest this 1000 into the Infosys stock it is known as an individual perspective of investing. Now consider another case where the Mr. X chooses to invest this 1000 not on in one stock but into two stocks say for example he wants to invest one uh, a some proportion of its wealth into Infosys and uh, some part into another sector in some FMCG company say for example ITC now the, other, the question that he has to ask himself is what proportion I should invest in Infosys and what proportion I should invest in ITC Say for example he decides to invest 30% of its wealth into Infosys and 70% of its wealth into ITC. This means that he will invest $300 into Infosys and $700 into uh, ITC Limited. Now this perspective of adding the securities in is known as the uh, portfolio that contains more than one security uh, as an investment. Now. Uh, uh, what, uh, one of the most important aspect uh, that we need to understand is that why the why to invest in portfolios the best answer to this question is that it gives us benefits of diversification say for example uh, if Mr. X was in in investing only into Infosys and if Infosys stock dropped or in Infosys stock fall it means a clear loss to the Mr. X because he does not have an offsetting position in this case now consider here if the Infosys stock draw uh, fall and ITC stock uh, has increased. Uh, in this case any loss on the Infosys will be completely offset by the gain on the ITC limited. So this by investing into the portfolio it gives us better uh, options of uh, diversification. Now uh, the second question that we need to ask is that uh, 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 how does diversification and benefit sorry when when will diversification benefit an investor So now, the uh, best answer to this question is that uh, when the uh, uh, stocks uh, in the portfolio are not uh, perfectly positive, perfectly positively correlated. Now, uh, say for example. Uh, the, uh, we have the another stock here say for example it's Hindustan Union Limited now if the stocks if the Hindustan Union Limited limit if we add this Hindustan Union Limited limited to this portfolio and see what is going to happen to the risk return characteristics of portfolio now I explained that if they are not perfectly posi perfect positively correlated. Now suppose if I invest, if I if I add Hindustan Unilever uh, to the uh, existing portfolio, and if Hindustan Unilever Limited does not have the perfect positive correlation, that's a correlation of plus one, 
In this case, the uh, benefits of diversification may arise. Let me explain it like this. Say, for example, if, if there is a positive correlation, which means that if in Hindustan Unilever is limited, the returns on this portfolio are also decreasing. So it will result in the loss situation. Now, uh, in this regard, uh, we need to add the add the add such a security inside the existing portfolio that does not show any perfect correlation uh, uh, with the existing stocks. Another important case is the man this portfolio management began in 1950 when Harry Markowitz. gave the theory as portfolio portfolio in portfolio management and now uh, uh, later on uh, it was further developed in, in during 1960s by Trenor Sherp and this concept today is known as modern portfolio management uh, that will be discussed in the uh, future classes so uh, uh, we say that uh, a portfolio investment uh, is beneficial only to an individual as and when uh, the stocks are not perfectly correlated with each other. If they are perfectly correlated, then the benefits of diversification may not arise. Now, uh, let me move on to the calculation of the expected return on the portfolio. Now uh, the expected return on the portfolio is measured as the summation of the uh, returns uh, from period 1 to n, uh, the weight of the particular security into the expected returns of that security. Now let me consider an example. Say for example I have two stocks. Uh, let me consider continue with the previous example. Say for example I have the stock of ITC and I have the stock of Infosys. No, uh, uh, I have uh, already calculated, uh, I have, I am given the historical returns across some period. Say for example, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And I'm giving the returns on ITC equal to minus 10 percent. With uh, and I'm also giving the returns in the next period is equal to 15 percent. I'm also giving uh, the returns are 18 percent. The returns are 22 percent, and the returns are 27 percent. The returns on Infosys are 5 percent. In the next period, they are 12 percent. Then 19 percent put up the percentage here and then I have a uh, 19 percent and then 15 and then 12 percent I'm also given the probability of the occurrence of these returns across these time periods they are as 0.10 0.30 0 0.50 Now suppose I have an individual, Mr. X, and he decided to invest 30% of its wealth into this security and 70% of its wealth into this security. Now the, uh, uh, he has a portfolio containing of ITC and Infosys in which the Inf ITC Limited has 30% weight and the uh, Infosys has 70%. So how do we actually calculate the return on the portfolio? Now first let me calculate the expect expected returns on the ITC limited as we have done in previously. Expected return on ITC will be calculated as minus 10 into 0.1 plus 12, plus, sorry 15 into 0.3. We have done it in previously also 18 into 0.3. 22 into point 0.2 and then plus 27 into point uh, 0.1 therefore the expected returns on ITC limited is equal to 16 percent 
Now let me calculate the expected return on the inforces. They are equal to 5 into 0.1 plus 12 into 0.3 plus 19 into 0.3 plus 15 into 0.2 plus 12 into 0.1 which is equal to 14 percent now I need to calculate the expected return on the portfolio in which this ITC limited holds 30 percent stake and Infosys holds 70 percent stake so what is the weight of ITC it is 0.3 what are its expected returns? They are 16. What is the weight of Infosys? That is 0 0.7. And what is its returns? That is 14 percent. Now let me do the calculations. That is 0 0.3 into 16. That is 16 Therefore, the returns are equal to 14.6 percent. Now, uh, uh, after calculating the returns on the portfolio, we can move on to the calculation of the expected risk on the portfolio.